If you're thinking about building a flight simulator that looks something a little bit like this, then here are my five top tips from someone who's done it. My first top tip for you is don't rush it. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is just rushing in blindly without any real idea about what you're about to do. What do you really want to get out of this hobby? What are you really trying to do it for? Do you want GAs? Do you want to have multi-versatility, virtual reality? Do you want just a fixed panel? What do you actually want? Where's it going to go? How often are you going to use it? You don't think them through. You might find yourself getting a bit snookered a bit later on. I've got a Cessna 172 uh, G1000 and it's great, uh, but it also has limitations because it is a fixed panel. So be mindful of what you're building and how much versatility you want to build into it. For me, this is great. I love it and I wouldn't turn it back for any second. For others, it may not be. Think it through, plan first. Top tip number one. My second top tip relates to your budget. You may have some idea in your head about what you really want to spend uh, on this hobby. I would take whatever you think you're going to spend and probably triple it. This will add up over time. You will find yourself constantly spending on this hobby. Now it doesn't have to be thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, but it really doesn't end. There will always be something that you will want to upgrade over time and something that you will want to change out over time. It just evolves that way. I've recently talked about this, but I've spent over $35,000 Australian over the years on this simulator. As it sits here today, it's probably worth a lot less than that, but that's how much money has been invested by buying things and selling them off, buying things and upgrading, buying things and constantly changing things out. So the budget uh, certainly is nowhere near uh, going to be what you think it is. You may do that for your base model to start with, but expect upgrades and other things to happen over time. Your budget's going to be a big one. So keep that in mind when you're getting into this uh, hobby and certainly when you're getting into full enclosures and cockpit building in itself. My third top tip for you is investment of time. Your investment of time is going to be huge. When you are building a flight simulator, it is going to take you a lot of time. It's not that easy when you're certainly when you're doing something from first principles, ask any flight sim builder that has actually taken a cockpit from first principles, just how much time they have spent in terms of getting that sim rig actually working. And then when it is actually is working, then you will always find yourself tinkering. There's always something to do. The investment of time is huge. It's not something that's like an hour or so every few weeks. It is going to take up a lot of your time, especially when you're in that building phase. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Think of the fact that you are gonna have to spend a lot of time getting your sim built, but it'll be worth it at the end of the day. A 3D printer, whilst might be a little bit of an investment up front, will pay for itself in spades. You can do so much with a 3D printer and I have done a heap on my sim rig with a 3D printer. And when this part hasn't worked or it hasn't quite fitted or whatever it might be, guess what? You just run yourself another one, make some adjustments and run it again. The cost of the actual filament itself is next to nothing. It's It has paid for itself over and over again. The 3D printer, if you're a cockpit builder, grab yourself a 3D printer. You will not regret it. Learn a bit about 3D printing and you will love it. And not only that, there are a ton of free models out there that you can purely download, put the G-code into your printer and bang, off you go. You don't even have to design a lot of it. You can just import the code straight in. It's pretty straightforward and easy to do once you get the hang of it. And it looks pretty cool too on your desk. 3D printer, top tip number four. My last top tip, and I know there's probably others, but my last one is 
Learn from the community. The flight sim community is huge. There are so many people out there with all different aspects of flight simulation. We've got people that do hardware reviews, software reviews, flight sim streamers, flight sim builders, people that are niched into just discrete little aspects of flight simulation. The list goes on. There are some great people out there and I have learned so much over many, many years of listening to and, and talking with the flight sim community. Reach out to the flight sim community, soak up all of the information that they've got. You will not regret it. It's a huge community and it loves to help as well. I don't think I've faced anyone ever that I've ever reached out to that hasn't wanted to lend a hand to me and vice versa as well. I'm always here to listen to your questions and reach out if you also have anything as well. The flight sim community is my top tip number five and will help you all the way along your flight cockpit building journey. I have a bonus tip, tip number six. I thought of it as I was going through the top five. Tip number six is simply have fun. Have fun. This is a hobby. It's a fantastic hobby. Enjoy it for the hobby that it is. There's no rush. You will love it. Building alone is a hobby and it's so much fun to do. Watching something come up and be created is absolutely sensational. So enjoy it for the hobby it is. It's fantastic. You're going to love it. Well, that's it from me. I hope that was of some benefit to you. Thank you so much for joining. I look forward to catching up with you on the next one. Bye for now. Think about all those things that are going to... Yeah.